Hi and welcome back, my name is Emily. This video is a part of a video hop to celebrate Trinity Stamps latest release. This release is called Happily Ever After and it has the most amazing wedding themed produce that you can imagine. So I will use this little cute gnome from Trinity Stamps. This one is called Bloom and Grow and it's just adorable. Uh, there are coordinating dies available and I will be using them for this project today. I started off by using my black ink pad here and I stamped it to some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I love this cardstock when you're doing um, watercoloring with the Sig Clean Color Real Brush Markers that I pulled out of my stash today. I love these markers, but I haven't been using them lately. Uh, here you can see my pack and you can see my swatches up there. And the colors are just um, um, like mushed into this package. I started off by buying the 48 markers and I have used them a ton and they never run out of uh, color or anything. So I, I haven't had any problems like that. Uh, I just bought a couple of extras that I wanted for my to like uh, extend my collection and I just use or store everything together in this large pack. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling some color to the base of the leaves here and then I'm dragging the color out with a um, um, water brush pen here and I have a rug or a cloth to the left of where I'm just um, like taking away some of the color so I get a fade from dark to light. I just love that effect with these markers. It's really easy. So if you are usually coloring with Copic markers, I would say that the process is quite similar, that you're using one marker and then you can fade the colors. So I, I just love this. I think I get a lot of control with them. I like my Copics mostly because I get a good control but these are really similar and you get a good feel and you can just play around and have fun so you can see my colors are really springy and happy and i wanted to keep everything really like vibrant and fun uh, so i hope that uh, shows up in my projects today and you can also see that i am using the same colors on a couple of different elements in the scene just to connect everything and for the face, I think he looked a little bit too pale, so I will go in with some gray markers. If I would do this again, I probably would pull out more of a brownish color, uh, but I went for the gray here because I had them laying on my desk uh, after creating the rocks and everything in my scene. So I probably would change that if I would do this again and maybe just pull out a little bit more brown to this. I think that had warm warmed his face a little bit more. So you can see our scene here or our gnome and watering can and everything are starting to um, come together and here is how it looks. I also um, cut out the image as well as a couple of flowers. Here is a new slim line cover plate uh, that is a part of the newest release. This one is called Floral Twinkle and it's just beautiful in real life. I will have this like a focal point for my card. So I'm just cutting out a portion of this and running it through my machine. And here you can see how beautiful that is. Uh, it's really gorgeous. And I wanted this to be behind my panel. So this is a cream colored cardstock that I will just use a circle from my stash and cut out a portion of this. And I'm using some low tech adhesive tape to do that. And then you can see my frame here and I will just fit this behind. And you can see how cute that is. And I wanted to have some color that coordinated with my scene that I created previously here or with the gnome, the colors that I colored my gnome into. And yeah, I think this turned out really cute. Now I will adhere this to directly to my a2 size card base and on top I will foam my mount my panel just to get some space between our background and um, that center part. If you'd like you could have used uh, some sequence or something like that inside but I didn't for my project today. 
but you can see how cute that is and how it turns out. And I will also use some double-sided foam adhesive to raise up my image here. And behind him and on top I will just tuck the smaller elements that I also colored in, the small flowers. So you can see all the dimension. And I will also use some sequins in the end here. Just because I think when you get some sparkle it always... I always think that is a fun feature. So for the sentiment, in the set it is uh, just for you a sentiment and I wanted to heat emboss that on top of some black cardstock. So I'm doing that twice because I have a tendency to mess up one of them and I wanted not to be having to pull out everything again. So I'm using some white embossing powder. And then I'm heat setting that off camera and here you can see our little sentiment and I actually adhere it on top of our watering can here just to tie everything together. And here it is. I will embellish this as I said with some sequins and I also pulled out my white gel pen. I nearly use these on all of my products just because I think it's fun and it gives that highlight that I never um am able to get when I'm coloring. I'm not that good. So I think this gives a more of a shine and some interest to your project. I will also, uh, before I forget, mention that I will have links down below for the products that I'm using in this video. Uh, and the first link below will be the link to the next person in this video hop. So be sure to hop along and you will have a chance to win some amazing prizes if you leave comments on all the stops. And um, if you like this video, all that does is to tell YouTube that you like this content and that you would like to see some more in the future. So that really helps us out and that helps us bring this content out every every day and every month so thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time with me here today and i hope you enjoyed uh, the card making process until next time i hope you have a fabulous day bye